In my opinion, One Piece is the best manga of all time. The Wano arc is over, and it seems that the focus has shifted towards its end game. Throughout the story, many deep character relationships have been formed or explored, and fans are looking forward to the special reunion before One Piece ends. But before we start this video, please smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and click notification bell or you will miss future anime videos. Despite being enemies, the two developed a certain degree of respect for each other during their battle at the Smile Factory. Senor Pink told Frankie if he survived his finishing move, he'd accept defeat, and he even kept his promise when the latter withstood it. Upon being defeated by Frankie, the cyborg wiped his fallen adversary's tears and showed an interest in hearing of Pink's past, should they ever meet again in the future. Jaguar D. Saul was one of the three people who influenced Nico Robin. Jaguar D. Saul also held a special place in Robin's heart for befriending her during her periods of loneliness, recognizing her pain, and encouraging her to laugh in hard times, in addition to sacrificing himself in order to save her life. Saul was shipwrecked in a storm, and then sent adrift in the ocean, until fatefully landing on Ohara itself. There, he met, and, at first unknowingly, befriended Nico Robin, and was reunited with Nico Avia. After promising Avia that he would ensure Robin's safety, Saul was confronted by Vice Admiral Alkiji as he was destroying the Buster Call ships. As he was being frozen, Saul smiled and laughed, cryptically echoing the way Gal D. Roger was executed two years prior. When Robin later learned from Shaka that Saul was still alive and in hiding, she was brought to tears by this revelation. Yes, Hope is Usopp's father. While Usopp has yet to be shown interacting with his father, Usopp has remained proud of him even though he took the path of a pirate. Yes, Hope also seems to care deeply about his son despite being absent for the majority of his life. It is currently unknown if Yes, Hope is aware his son has also become a pirate and that he is a member of Luffy's crew. However, given the fact Usopp's current bounty now shows Usopp's true name and face, it is likely that he will become aware of it. Shirahoshi is the mermaid princess of the Ryuku kingdom on Fishman Island, and is a supporting ally to Luffy and his crew during the Fishman Island arc Shirahoshi and Luffy have a good relationship and have become very close friends. She greatly admires and adores Luffy, believing him to be an incredible person and fighter. Luffy actually finds Shirahoshi irritating from time to time, but cares for her a great deal, wishing to help her as best he can, and has come to like her a lot. Before Luffy left Fishman Island, Luffy promised Shirahoshi that they would meet again. Vivi traveled with and assisted the pirates for almost the entire Arabasta saga and strongly considered joining their crew after Crocodile's defeat, though she ultimately declined their offer in favor of working to restore her country. She remains closer to the Straw Hats than anyone else outside of their crew. She and Kiru are now regarded as honorary members of the Straw Hat Pirates, at least by Luffy and the others. Her close relationship with the Straw Hats were further emphasized when she was one of the few people who realized Luffy had a message for the crew during his second appearance at Marineford. But she did not understand the message since she had no context. Upon learning of what the Straw Hats did at Dress Rosa, she immediately knew what they were doing. Bonnie's father is Bartholomew Kuma, the former king of Sorbet Kingdom turned revolutionary then warlord. Their relationship was a very positive and affectionate one, as Bonnie remembered the love her father gave during her childhood. She became very outraged towards the world government for turning her father into a cyborg, followed by enslaving and allowing him to suffer abuse at the hands of the world nobles. This is further emphasized by the fact that she went to Vegapunk's island base of Egghead to ask questions of him regarding Kuma's pacifist transformation. Kuma is the only family Bonnie has left, as she defended a pacifist unit that resembles her father from Luffy despite how it was trying to kill them. She also defended her father's true personality whenever people bring up his reputation as a tyrant. There is only one swordsman who Zoro aims to defeat in order to become the world's best swordsman, and that is none other than Dracula Mihawk. After the Summit War of Marine Ford, Zoro is willing to put aside his pride and beg Mihawk to train him in order to become stronger for his crew. 
he notices that Zoro is putting his pride aside all for the sake of his captain. The next time Mihawk and Zoro meet, they will likely duel for the title Mihawk currently holds. This will be an incredibly dramatic fight that fans have highly anticipated since One Piece's early years. Dragon was never a part of his son Luffy's life, giving custody of him to his grandfather Monkey D. Garb. Luffy never knew or cared who his father was, only finding out it was Dragon two years ago when Garb told him at Water 7, and seeing Dragon's face for the first time after reading the report on Baltigo's destruction. Dragon appears to be supportive of Luffy's journey as a pirate, expressing approval of him, becoming one when at Logatown, and reflecting at Baltigo that he hoped for Luffy's pirating career to play a role in the world shifting. To that end, he saved Luffy from being captured by Smoker in Logatown, and anticipates reuniting with his son in the future. The one Shank seems to watch out for the most is Blackbeard, who gave him his three scars in a previous encounter. Shanks himself seems to know the potential danger Blackbeard represents is greater than that of anyone else. The two first met after a skirmish between the Roger Pirates and the Whitebeard Pirates. At Marineford, the two confronted each other, and Shanks addressed Teach in a tense manner. Only Shanks seemed to regard Teach as a significant threat compared to the Marines or the Whitebeard Pirates and their New World subordinate crews. Having already proclaimed his era as beginning, unveiling the new members of his crew, and demonstrating control over two devil fruits, Teach said he had achieved his goal for the time being, while also knowing he was not ready to face Shanks. Fans have anticipated an encounter between Shanks and Blackbeard for years, sharing theories that Blackbeard could kill Shanks, or that the two would, at the very least, engage in a fiery battle. There's clearly history between the two that Oda has yet to share that fans hope will come to light soon. Marshall D. Teach is one of Luffy's sworn archenemies besides Akainu. Luffy and Blackbeard first met each other during the Jaya arc when they had a disagreement over Cherry Pie, and have since gone on to become enemies. Blackbeard seems to hold a lot of respect for Luffy and recognizes him for his fierce determination to achieve his dream whilst also having an openly antagonistic relationship with him. Luffy, however, utterly loathes Blackbeard and puts a large portion of blame on him for Ace's death. His hatred grew even further when Blackbeard attacked his father, Monkey D. Dragon, and his brother, Sabo. Many people have speculated that Blackbeard will be Luffy's final enemy. If it's true, I really look forward to the moment where they meet again. Sakazuki, otherwise known as Akainu, is the fleet admiral of the marines having previously been an admiral, as well as one of Luffy's sworn archenemies besides Marshal D. Teach. He and Luffy hold nothing but absolute hatred for each other, and see one another as completely irredeemable enemies. Akainu loathes Luffy due to his absolute contempt for pirates, and believes the Straw Hat Captain is one of the biggest troublemakers out there. In return, Luffy has undeniable hate for Akainu as he is the one who killed his sworn brother, Port Gas D.A.'s right before his very eyes. The two have only met once, during the Summit War of Marineford, and for the majority of the battle they rarely cross paths. Luffy completely hates Akainu despite having never even exchanged words with him, nor acknowledged him, up until he killed his brother, Ace. There is no denying that Luffy and Sakazuki's reunion will be filled with tension, hatred, and quite possibly a fight. Sakazuki has an unwavering sense of justice that puts him in Luffy's opposition in almost every possible situation. Fans are unsure whether Sakazuki will act as one of the final villains of One Piece, but any meeting between the two is sure to be an exhilarating watch. Over 50 years earlier, Laboon met the Rumber Pirates after becoming lost and separated from his pod and began following them in his loneliness. After a while they noticed how sad he looked and they cheered him up by singing and as a result he continued to follow them. The crew grew attached to him because he was cute. Eventually, while feeding him bait, Brooke named him Laboon. He was accepted as a crew member and even aided them when an attack left a few crew members having fallen overboard and no one else could help them. Brooke cares a lot about his afro. It is the only thing he believes that Laboon will still recognize him by after 50 years, since it will not ever grow back again should it be cut. Brooke is extremely protective of it. Because of the promise Brooke and the rest of his crew made to Laboon, Brooke feels obligated to meet up with Laboon 
in order to fulfill that promise. He feels that Laboon would not forgive them for dying irresponsibly in the Grand Line. Brooke later learned from the Straw Hats that Laboon is still waiting at the Twin Capes, resulting in him becoming overjoyed that he can now continue his late crew's promise. During the From the Decks of the World, the 500 Million Man arc, Laboon is shown very happy after learning of Brooke's new bounty, indicating he is aware of Brooke's survival and involvement with the Straw Hats. Shanks and Luffy's reunion is the most anticipated in One Piece, teased from the first chapter in 1997. This reunion was always an exciting prospect for fans, as Shanks is Luffy's mentor and inspiration. However, Shanks has also since become one of the most mysterious and hyped-up characters in the whole series, and fans are eager to see more of the red-haired pirate. As of recent developments, fans are no longer sure where Shanks' loyalties lie. He has mysterious ties to the world government and the Gorose, and seems to have plans of his own regarding the One Piece itself. His reunion with Luffy will likely be somewhat unpredictable and highly pivotal to the story. Bentham aka Mr. Two, aka Bon Clay, has been a fan favorite since his introduction. Bon Clay was the absolute MVP during the events of Impel Down, aiding Luffy's attempt to free his brother, Ace, from his impending execution. Bon Clay has sacrificed himself for the sake of Luffy twice, in both Alabasta and Impel Down. Fans have long wished Bon Clay would even join the Straw Hat Pirates, However, he returned to Impel Down to become the new leader of Nukuma Land in the absence of Emporio Ivanko. That hasn't stopped fans from hoping he will still play a role in the climax of One Piece and have a long-awaited reunion with Luffy. Luffy, Sabo and Dodden Luffy and Sabo used to live with Dodden. Their meeting with Dodden begins with annoyance. However, over time, they grew to care for each other, as Dodden went out of her way to find and defend Luffy and Ace from Blue Jam, while Luffy grew worried about Dodden's safety. Dodden was also deeply shocked as much as Ace and Luffy when hearing about Sabo's presumed demise from Dogra. After the time skip, it appears she has learned that he was not truly dead. She was also saddened by some information regarding Sabo in the newspaper. Maybe after Luffy becomes the Pirate King, Luffy and Sabo will come back to visit Dodden. <laughs>